Thank you. I'd just like to cover a brief talk on why we make or why people make the decisions that they do in terms of empiric treatment. So this is a, uh, an interesting postal survey, which is worth looking at. It's quite a lot of data, but summarized here, two points. One is that if you ask a dozen ophthalmologists, they are maybe using a dozen different combinations of antibiotics. In yellow, only two of those are licensed medications for topical ophthalmic use. The second point over here in this table is why people make those decisions. And vancomycin, for example, which is a nun uh, not licensed, the primary reason is a broad antibiotic cover, uh, a problem with bacterial resistance, which may not be true, and also a not part of this questionnaire is a fear of litigation that if you don't use everything and the most modern antibiotics, then you may be opening yourself to uh, problems. Just, I think it's useful just to walk through the, the sequence of events of isolation of a bacteria and what happens to the sample. We've heard of taking the sample from the eye. What happens next? Basically, the old concept of taking a sample and then through chromogenic mechanisms identifying the organism is now passed. That era is gone. So the sample is grown and then it's placed on a slide and then exposed to a laser beam which vaporizes uh, the tissue and then it is isolated or identified using mass spectrometry. And so through a characteristic signal from each organism and over 100 Types of different organisms are, uh, can be identified by this, and this is Haemophilus influenza. The advantage of this is you get your answer in 30 minutes as opposed to one day. And so this is a, a revolution in bacteriology, which I think has, um, in terms of understanding, has passed a lot of us by. So this is how it's isolated. The sensitivity, similarly, is no longer or very rarely done in this disk diffusion method. The sample is placed into this big automated device and through matrix uh, analysis uh, provides a uh, pattern of um, sensitivity. With some organisms such as mycobact uh, mycobacterium, these methods are still needed, but for most bacteria, it's again a rapid uh, sensitivity test um, performed automatically. From that, you'll get an answer from your bacteriologist, and that can be useful or useless, depending on how well you've spoken to your bacteriologist. For example, this one here, corneal scrape, Citrobacter was isolated, and so because this is a common urinary tract infection, they provided a sensitivity screen appropriate for a urinary tract infection uh, with um, augmentin, ampicillin, etc. So you need to speak to your bacteriology to make sure you're getting appropriate antibiotic spectrum to the common uh, organisms that you see. You'll get a printout, and you'll have these S's and R's. So what are they? Those, firstly, are not the minimum inhibitory concentrations. This is a concept in bacteriology of breakpoint. So breakpoint is a chosen concentration of an antibiotic which defines whether the bacteria is susceptible or resistant. These figures, which are put into that instrument, are derived from UCAST, which is a committee which determines whether a bacterium is likely to uh, be killed or not killed. And so, for example, here, this is the breakpoint, and if the achievable antibiotic concentration in the tissue um, is here, then it's defined as sensitive. If you have to have more than the breakpoint, then it's defined as resistant. So the S and the R refer to breakpoint and not to the MIC. So this is MIC, this, this, this uh, tube dilution method. This is not the breakpoint. This is not what is giving you directly the sensitivity resistance profile. This also, as we've heard earlier, relates to the achievable concentration in serum. And so in the eye, we use fortified antibiotics. You may get better access with that or you may get protection of the organism in biofilm. And so there has to be some interpretation of these uh, results. And usually a topically applied drop will greatly exceed the serum concentration. So they're using the MIC, which is the best we've got, so no 
breakpoints are identified for topical antibiotics for the eye or skin. So we don't know. There's a complete absence of data as to the breakpoints uh, and hence the relevance of sensitivity and resistance for topically applied antibiotics. So using these, you get this uh, results. And so any treatment that you're going to use empirically needs to cover gram positives and gram negatives. Avoid antibiotics which have no effect on gram negatives. So contact lens associated keratitis, don't use vancomycin or chloramphenicol because those organisms don't have the structure to be killed by those antibiotics. So you need something preferably which is commercially available which is going to kill both. Ciprofloxacin, ofloxacin, moxifloxacin. We've moved through these steps not because they're more effective, fourth generation antibiotics are more effective, but because moxifloxacin is cheaper. So the drug companies have driven this change, not the bacteriologists. Be sensitive to what it's causing this, so gram, uh, contact lens keratitis, more likely to be a gram negative organism. And as we've heard, if you have an unusual organism related to refractive surgery or uh, corneal transplantation, you may be getting an unusual organism and you have to um, be careful about not investigating. Resistance, markedly regional. Uh, this, so anything I tell you here may not be relevant to your local practice. So resistance in Europe is not a major problem. Practice points. One, use a commercially available uh, broad-spectrum antibiotic. Don't use unlicensed medications if you don't have to. Avoid toxicity, particularly with aminoglycosides. It's conjunctival necrosis, so fortified gentamicin. Don't use it if you don't have to. Collect relevant data. So this is, shows the differences in parts of the world. So again, your data may not be the same as ours or America. Failure is more likely to be misdiagnosis than resistance of the organisms. You've missed fungus or acanthamoeba. Finally, antibiotic stewardship. Final slide here. This is a report in the UK by looking at the problem of antibiotic resistance. These points here, they find it incredible that doctors just do what we do of using empiric treatment without any backup information. Their goal is antibiotic prescriptions should be informed by up-to-date surveillance and...